Greatness, your supremacy, your excellence makes me wonder with you on my side, oh Jesus, my King, I'm more than a conqueror. How glorious you are And I choose to sing Holy, holy, holy Art thou Lord The one and only Who was and is and is to come My King of kings how glorious you are. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, when Jesus makes you test on his goodness, on his wonders, on his test, you don't want to stop. He's so sweet. He's so wonderful. His love is real. He has no conditions that are unbearable. Even the conditions that God has are conditions of love. So he loves us. And uh, I pray, all oh my viewer, that one day you will test on the test of Jesus. Trust me, when that day comes, you wouldn't want to stop. You won't want to stop. It will be wonderful. It will be glorious. It will be powerful. It will be the best day of your life. And that day is not very far. It is now. I'm Pastor Paul Makanga, your friend, who loves you the way you are, in the proportions of the love of Jesus. I love you, and Jesus loves you too. Would you please allow me, and we pray, so that we enter into today's word. Heavenly Father, how glorious you are. How wonderful you are. How awesome you are. The only King of Kings, the only Lord of Lords, the only Master of all, the performer of everything known and unknown, the sustainer and upholder of all creation, the creator of beginning and the creator of the ending, the Alpha and Omega, the only one that exists among the realms of godliness we love you jesus we love our father in heaven and we love you holy spirit together with our servants the angels we love heaven and everything therein in jesus name here am i with my viewers oh holy trinity of god come and favor us come and bless us Come and establish us into our canon lands. Come and change everything around us. Come and take us to a level which no man can claim. Come and make us the best there is among your vessels. And today I pray, oh God, that uh, the joy, your, the joy of your heart becomes our joy and it eventually becomes our strength in the Lord. May you visit every need in our lives. May you touch everywhere we cannot touch. May you outstretch your arm towards us. And may your arm become our weaponry, our arsenal to divide and rule, to open up heavens and bless us like never before. May our enemies tremble at your hand. We love you, Jesus. And we praise you because you are glorious. Almighty King, in Jesus' mighty name, and everybody says, Amen. <laughs>
just a day of fever <laughs> but 14 trust me today <laughs> God is going to give you the experience of what you're going to be in future. To this type of favor gives you the experience of what you're entirely going to be in future. To this type of favor that I'm going to share gives you a hint, a test, the exposure and the experience of what you're going to actually be in Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready for today's word? I'm so happy and so glad and excited because of what God is going to do for you this, this, this day and where he's going to take you. Be, trust me, my dear viewer, the days ahead you are full of light. There is no darkness in them. Can I tell you what you're going to become? You're having a, your days ahead of you that are full of blessings, that are full of joy, that are full of relaxation, that are full of rest, that are full of peace, that are full of glory, and that are full of joy. You know, we have a God who loves us beyond and who has... <laughs> who has us in the palms of his hand. You know, let me read, because when I start going there, we might end up not listening to any other word read from the Bible. So Genesis chapter 39, Genesis chapter 39, verse 1, I am going to read up to verse 6. My dear viewer, I want you to intently listen to these verses because every verse here has another type of favor, though I'm going to share it today in a corrective manner. Genesis 39 verse 1 says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. I want you to listen to this word Egypt, Egyptians, and you help me count. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, that is one time, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, that is number two, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, who, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, that is number three, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house, that is number four, the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Now this is the last verse which I want you to here because it brings out our topic today, favor. Verse 6 says, And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat, and Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. In today's script, scripture, the word Egypt and Egyptian was mentioned severally. Let me read verse 1 again. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. They begin with Joseph, because God begins with you. Secondly, they, be, they, 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 they add on the location, the nation, where he went. That is Egypt. Then they put on Potiphar, the person of Egypt, a, a captain in Egypt, of Pharaoh. 
So here they are in the verse in the first verse they are speaking of where they took Joseph. First they speak of Joseph in the first place. Then they speak of whatever happens where they took him. Pharaoh, Potiphar, Egypt, the Egyptian. God is saying two things here. Number one, no matter what happens to your life, you should never allow your situations to change who you are. If you are Joseph, remain Joseph. If you are a man of good character, remain of good character. If you have a dream, stay with your dream, regardless of what you're going through. Remain Joseph. You see, all that happened to Joseph happened, but it never changed his name. Your name will never change. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. He's a wonderful Jesus, a wonderful God. Your situations should not change your name. When I speak of your name, I speak your totality. Your soul, your spirit, your body, your dreams, your visions, your calling, your purpose, your promises, your purposes, your agenda in life. Whatever you're going through should not replace your name. Poverty is a name, but it does not belong to you. Rejection is a name, but it's not your name. Suffering is a name, but it is not your name. Praise the name of the Lord. Sickness is a name and disease is a name, but it's not your name. Therefore, my dear viewer, before we continue deeper in this, what I'm going to share today, I want you to understand that no matter what happens in your life, according to God, you remain untouched. You remain unscratched. You remain unwounded. Today I want you to learn this principle that no matter where life throws you, no matter how life treats you, because this was a father's son, Jacob's son. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. He, was, he, he had a family. He had brothers and sisters. But now life has thrown him in Egypt, in a land of witchcraft and wizardry. In a land of warlocks, in a land of where they do not associate with, with Hebrews. They used to consider them an abomination. Life brought him to Egypt into slavery in a house of a witch doctor. In a land where there is no true God, but Pharaoh consider, being considered as the only God there is. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you with me, my dear viewer? Praise Jesus. <laughs> you see, you remain who you are, regardless of how people treat you. You remain who you are, regardless of how, how many times situations toss you around. You remain who you are. You remain Joseph. His name did not change. The wizardry in Egypt never changed his faith. You also remain with your faith so long as you are with Jesus. If you are born again, remain born again even when you're living in a bar. Remain born again even when you're living among sinners. Remain who you are. Your identity should remain in its originality. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. It didn't matter to Joseph whether they had, they had separated him from his entire family and from his nationality. He was in a foreign land, a foreigner, in the house of the land of which doctrine. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus, my viewer. Remain Joseph. It doesn't matter you're living with Pharaoh. You might be living with a drunkard. You shouldn't turn into a drunkard. You must remain intact. 
real and true. Remain Joseph even in the land where your life has thrown you. Every one of us, each one of us has ever been tossed around by life, mistreated by life in a way we wouldn't want. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, you must remain who you are. Remain intact. We shouldn't be like maize or millet when they put it in a mortar, it turns into, into fula. No! If you are maize, remain maize. You see, a situation comes to those grains when you put them somewhere and you toss them around. You crush them. They are crushable. But you must remain uncrushable. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. He remained Joseph. Remain a housewife. A loving wife. Even when your husband is tossing you around. Remain a loving husband. A loving parent. Even when situations are commanding you to become somebody else. Remain holy even when you are tempted. That is verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. Why do they begin with Joseph and where he was taken? They speak of Potiphar. They speak of Pharaoh. You know Pharaoh was a god in Egypt. I hear they even feared to look into his face. He ruled them in fear. That when they looked into his face they would be burnt. By fire. Nobody dared to look into his face. That's where he was taken. But the Bible says he remained with God. He didn't turn into a witch doctor. There are some men and women of God I love in the Bible. Like Moses in Egypt, also in Egypt. He also didn't turn into a witch doctor. And yet he grew up into witch doctrine, into wizardry. Never allow situations to turn you into somebody you are not. Some of us, situations have made us which we are, which, who we are not. Some situations have made us hate us, has filled us with unforgiveness. Some situations have made us prostitutes, has made us womanizers, manizers has made us thieves, corruptors, depending on where you are. Where you are should not change you. Some of you are dressing decently, but situations and environments, localities and nationalities changed your dress code. They changed your, your, your mindset. They changed your character because they always mistreat you. You also trying to devote into mistreatment. My dear viewer, Joseph never changed. Regardless of what he had gone through, right from his father's house, even when he was in the pit, even when he was sold, even in the hands of the Ishmaelites, they do not show us that he fought. And when he came here, he remained Joseph. Will you remain who you are? Because in this series, there was a type of favor I spoke about and told you, life has a way of lessening us. For example, in the scenario of Esther, in the book of Esther, God created a queen and life made her an orphan and a foreigner. God created a prime minister when he was making Mordecai, but life lessened him to a, a, a security guard, a gate man. God created the Israelites as his first nation, as his nation of love. But life had lessened them to slaves. But my dear, Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Moses had the parents, but life 
had lessened, lessened him into an adopted child. Life wanted to convert him into wizardry. He learned everything in Egypt. But his knowledge never turned him into a doctor. He ended up becoming one of the greatest redeemers in the history of the Bible. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you with me, my viewer? Today's type of favor will give you experience of what you're going to be. Will give you exposure exposure of what you'll become. Yesterday I told you favor has levels and types. Every level and every type of favor does a specific work. Today's type of favor in the chapter of Genesis 39 after when Joseph had served this man for a while because the Bible says this man looked at his life and when he evaluated and accounted the life of Joseph, the period from when he brought him into his house, and on that day when favor knocked on the doors of Potiphar to favor, to favor Joseph into the exposure of what he was going to become, into the experience of what he will be. Remember, Joseph was created a leader. Not a leader of his family or nation, but a leader of nations and a leader of fallen people. A prime minister of fallen people. It is very hard for me, a Ugandan, to be a prime minister in the United States of America before they convert me into their citizenship. Joseph was never made an Egyptian. In other words, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, Joseph was not a citizen of Egypt. I am a Ugandan. I can never be a prime minister in the United States of America or a senator or a president of America without them first making me their citizen. I must have a citizenship first because that's when I will qualify to be their citizen. Joseph was not made a citizen of Egypt. He lived there as a foreigner until the day he died. So Joseph from the beginning, from divinity, from heaven, he was meant a leader of foreigners. This is what his brothers never understood. They thought he was going to be their leader. They misinterpreted his dreams. And we thank God that God took him away because they were going to make him manifest a local dream. A familiar dream, a family dream, and yet he was a national leader, an international leader, a leader of foreigners. Those are rare leaders. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. For example, this the president of the United States. Each state in America is a different country. Only that they joined it into one. He's reigning. He's ruling foreigners. If they will ever make the United States of Africa and they have one president, even that president also will be ruling and reigning foreigners too. Joseph was like that. He was meant to rule foreigners, Egyptians, not a people of his caliber, not a people of his nationality. We thank God for some things that happen in our lives when we do not understand what is taking place. So, he is in Egypt. This man evaluated him. 
and he said there uh, ever since this man came here everything in my house and everywhere i take him as a slave in every garden in every plantation in every place i've ever taken him to work there things have prospered therefore this this time it is favor This time it is favor. This time it is favor that was speaking. He said to Potiphar, "Can't you see? Ever since he came, you are blessed." Potiphar You have a rare slave a different slave a unique slave He is divine You have a blessed slave You have a slave that is not a slave Potiphar Do you want to prosper more Do you want to increase more Do you need the continuity of these blessings you are seeing? Potiphar, do you want this to become co- that is on him to become contagious to all the members of your family? Do you want your house to be outstanding among other families? Do you want your blessings to overstay? Potiphar, Do you want this man to be of a greater blessing to you? I think I would advise you Potiphar increase his influence. Make him a leader. Potiphar, make sure when you promote him, you promote him above you. He should not report to you. Because the Bible says Potiphar owed to know nothing except the food he was eating. Potiphar gave everything into the hands of Joseph. Even his leadership in the house. They reported to Joseph and whatever he did was fine. Whatever he said was fine. So Favor spoke about Joseph before Potiphar and advised and commanded Potiphar to to promote Joseph even above him he said i understand he is your slave he you are his master he must report to you but make sure if you want the increase more increase more development more multiplication more blessing more abundance more success if you want to be more successful successful potiphar listen to me i am favor when i speak and they obey they see my goodness they see my greatness they see my screamers they see my blessings behold i am favor and when you want to define me you say favor equals to god favor equals to all the blessings of god do you want to see This continue Potiphar listen to me promote him above you In other words you should never treat him as a slave again Of course I will not make him step on your head He will stay humble He will stay submissive He will stay meek He will stay obeying you And because you are Egyptians I understand you call him an abomination you don't want to relate with him I understand even your wife or anybody else will continue calling him a slave but there is something unique on that man Potiphar I am that uniqueness my name is Favor he is well favored 
Don't you see he's a goodly person? Can't you see what he has been doing? Ever since he came, you are among the prosperous. You are among the rich people. It was my doing favor. He is well favored. I am the uniqueness on him. Therefore, stand down. Let him reign. Let him rule everything and everybody. Potiphar, if you obey me, you will not regret it. My viewer, do you know what I've just said? Do you know what God is speaking to you? Do you know what favor is going to speak concerning your life? First of all, this type of favor is going to make everyone around you recognize your potential. If they refuse, favor will take you somewhere where they will celebrate you. Favor went in the family of Jacob, in the family of Joseph's brothers, and he spoke to them and he said, Hey, I am favor. I am on this boy. I understand he is the last born of yours so far, but I am on him. What do you say? And if they said, away with him, we must kill him. And if ever said, what? You failed to recognize me on this man. You failed to recognize his blessing. Is it because you don't know what can happen if somebody is favored? Or it is because you are jealous? On which side are you? It was favor questioning these people. You know, when God reveals who you are to somebody, favor is asking that somebody, do you want to stay with him? Do you want to use him? Do you recognize me on him? Will you take advantage of his talents and gifts and purpose and calling and greatness and uniqueness? Will you accept him to be your blessing? Whenever God reveals who you are to people, especially in the matters of spiritual matters, Whenever God tells them, that's my evangelist, that girl can sing, that one is a pastor in the making. When God gives you some favor to make people recognize your potential, he's actually giving them a question. Do you want him or her? Would you want him or her to stay? Will you make use of him? Will you accept him to bless you? Will he serve him? Will he serve as a blessing to you? Will you recognize him? To the family of Joseph, they said no. We can't stand the last born ruling and reigning over us. We can't stand his divinity to take leadership of us. Why do you speak with him alone? Why didn't you speak with the firstborn? Favor, you are not fair. Don't you understand our culture? Don't you know that the firstborn means everything belongs to him, including the rest of his siblings? Don't you understand? Favor, don't you understand? That there is protocol? Don't you understand? He has just come into this world. We have seen more than he has seen. We have suffered more than him. Don't you understand? If you would be fair, we are the ones deserving. And favor said, I do not choose according to human understanding. I choose according to divinity. I choose according to somebody's calling. I choose according to God's will. Culture does not decide the fate of my people. Protocol does not decide the greatness of my people. Age does not define the capacity and the potential of my people. 
status does not approve my people's identities and if ever said if you do not recognize this i will cause you throw him in a pit to save you from killing him i will cause you to sell him to the ishmaelites to set him into a place where he will be recognized we thank god for potifa when he ever spoke to him he stood down can you imagine a man in his own family giving you charge of everything because even one day his wife said you replaced my husband there are four according to what i see you doing the influence you have in this house you are even greater than my husband why don't you become my husband joseph and joseph said yes i was favored and given this but i don't remember him giving you me Do you know what Favor was doing? But before we go there I asked you a question and I've been meandering around to think to make you think about it. Do you know what Favor is speaking to you today? Favor is saying to you that if you are going to be a business woman somewhere today he's favoring you to have the exposure and the knowledge and the skills required for you to execute the business is bringing to you in the near future some exposures that favor gives us we do not recognize those exposures for example if you are going to be a landlady Oh land lord favor will give you the exposure of how a good landlord or landlady should be do you know what he does he passes you through renting some time just like when they train a pilot they first give him exposure to planes and to space Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You see even the renting you're doing it is a favor at work. The awkwardness of your landlord or landlord is teaching you to be a good one when your time comes. Therefore, you're having exposure. Even if you were landlord or landlord today, favor has given you exposure. on how to treat people in the yes states that God is going to give you David rather Joseph was meant to be a great leader but he had no experience he had no exposure so God first gave him a simple cocoon a simple legion of some people a group of people reigning over his slaves Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing works two sided. Or two sidedly. If you were leader somewhere, God is giving you exposure and a test on how you will treat. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Those that are led it is favor giving them exposure. Favor is making them learning from their leaders. Because one day they will be leaders too. So we, when you see the mistakes of your leader don't condemn him or judge him God is teaching you how a good leader should be If he's awkward God is telling you favor is telling you that when I put you in such a position you must be a better leader 
when he is a good leader to you, God is telling you that's exactly how I want you to be even better. When you are the lead, but when you are, even if you are the leader, that's not the last position that God has. He's giving you exposure and experience. This is what this favor did. The reason as why favor spoke to Potiphar to promote this man, God, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, favor, wanted this man to have experience. In other words, he was in the school of favor. Did you know that even favor has a school? You know favor wants to favor you greatly. Wants to favor you greatly. Like the former president of the United States of America, he didn't become a president on that time. No. He first became a leader somewhere in different places. When he gained enough exposure and experience, the former president of you, the, the former president of USA, he came into power. Everybody loved him. Do you know what happened to him? Favor. You know favor is taking you somewhere greater than where you are today. But my dear, he has to first give you exposure. And experience. You under, I understand. To some of us watching, you don't even have a job. So you're asking yourself, which kind of exposure is that? Well, can I explain it to you? You see the suffering we are going through, or we go through. The lack of jobs, the lack of enough money, the lack of friends, the lack of whatever. Favor is also giving us exposure that when we come back on our feet, that when we stand on our feet, we will be in a better position, a better position to help other people. Haven't you ever seen someone condemning someone that is not working? Why don't you get a job? Why aren't you working? You don't want to work. My dear friend, they want to work, trust me. But situations do not allow them. But when God promotes such a person, he will understand what people will be going through. In other words, he will treat them with honor, with respect, without judging them and condemning them and calling them all sorts of names. Those people you see living awkwardly in offices, they didn't have the exposure and experience before they came there. They didn't have any lessons from favor. Therefore, my dear friend, Joseph was a leader here, but he was getting a lesson on how he will become and how he will behave when he became, when he will become. Or when he becomes a prime minister. God is giving you exposure. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Today's favor is a favor that gives us experience. If you're going to be a pastor, favor is giving you experience today. And, and exposure. At least one or two people will ask you to pray for them. If you're going to be a counselor, favor is teaching you to be a secret keeper. That's why you find people confiding in you. They tell you even their deepest secrets. You even hear them say, I normally don't tell people my things. I don't know why I'm telling you this. It means go favor is giving you the experience of what you're going to be. Haven't you ever wondered when married people are asking you a single person for a device? It is favor telling you 
I'm taking you in that direction. I'm giving you exposure. Prepare where you're going to go. That's what happens there. And you're going to help many people. Married especially. And you people who say, you know, she's not married. What can she tell me? He's not married. Which advice will he give me? Such statements are statements of the ignorance about what the Holy Spirit can do. If God can make a donkey speak, what about a born again single person? Some people need to have teachable spirits. Is he born again? Does he have the Holy Spirit? Listen, you're not listening to a single person. You're listening to the Holy Spirit. So don't be limited. Do not limit yourself. This was a, this was a slave reigning a married couple, reigning a family of a captain of the God of Pharaoh, a foreigner, a Hebrew man, an abomination was reigning and was blessing those who called themselves great. If you're going to be a great person, greatness begins now, even when, even before you enter there. Favor has put you in, here, in his school, in his experience, and in exposure. If you're going to help the, bro the broken hearted, that's why if ever gave you the experience of what it means to be broken hearted. If you find a disappointed girl, you know what it means because you have ever been there. If you're going to teach or to help about, to help people stay in purity, that's why you are still a virgin, even at that age. For you, you have the grace. It's not because men are unavailable. They are. And if you're going to help people understand, you know, God can forgive, me, can, can, can forgive you regardless of what you've done. That's why you have messed up so much in your life. You've sinned to the extent of disqualifying yourself by yourself from the love of God saying, uh -uh, I no longer deserve God's mercy. And Jesus says, my, my grace is sufficient, still sufficient. You still have my mercy. So, you have exposure. They will come to you crying, shedding tears. You know I've sinned. I don't think God still loves me. You tell them, my dear, he still does. Because you have the exposure. If you're going to have a lot of money in your life, that's why a lot of money keeps on coming through your hands. Maybe you were receptionist. You were teller. In a certain bank, you, will find you are a financial controller. You might have seen it even while growing up. When they are looking for a treasurer, they make you one. Why do you think so? The Holy Spirit, the favor of God is giving exposure. And so, more so, if you're going to have a lot of money and a lot of wealth and to be very rich, do you know what the devil does today? He makes you lack so much. But his favor is also giving you exposure there, saying, you see, I want you to understand those people who will come to you lacking almost everything. You've lacked. You've had a life of scarcity. You know how painful it is. Paul, when I bring you such people, 
Will you mock them? Will you bully them? Will you boost against them? Even after you've seen how it feels, even after you've had the exposure, Joseph was given to lead slaves, giving him exposure, saying, Joseph, when I make you a leader someday, will you mistreat slaves? Even after seeing how people treat slaves, will you mistreat them? And my dear, let me tell you, there were no slaves in the days of Joseph, when he became a prime minister, that country had no exceptional people called slaves. It was only when he, he died that a new king that he knew not Joseph, meaning a, a, a new king that he didn't know the God of Joseph and how the God of Joseph treated people. That's when slavery began. In other words, he learned the lessons that you favor gave him. Are you learning your lessons? I have met some people that never learned. When favor gave them exposure and experience, many of them went, go through what they went through. They didn't learn. You find a person who was once a, a tenant on somebody's house also mistreating those who rent on his houses. You find somebody who began as a worker. He's now a leader, a manager, a CEO, a leader of a certain department mistreating workers. Even after being lessened or schooled by favor, Exposed on how it feels to be just an employee, to be a reporter to somebody. Meaning they didn't learn. You find someone who was once poor, he has become very rich. After becoming very rich, instead of being a living example of how people should treat workers, he also becomes a mistreater. He refuses to pay people's salaries on time, even when he has the ability. He always cuts off the, 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 the medical allowances, all the, the allowances, and their salaries. He barks at them as if he's a dog. Praise the name of the Lord. You find somebody who was cheated upon once, cheating somebody, even after going through the pain of being cheated on. My dear viewer, are you learning from the lessons that if ever is giving you today? Make sure you learn, because if you do, you will be a better, different person. You find a somebody who was corrupted against before, corrupting others, embezzling other people's money, even after knowing that he also had once a, he once had a family, and they embezzled his funds, and his family went through a turmoil. Are you learning your lessons? Joseph learned his. He was given a chance to be exposed on how slaves are treated. When he became a prime minister, that custom stopped. It only began when he died. Are you learning from the lessons? Are you a good student in this school of favor? That's why some people trust you with their money, with their property. Keep it for me. Keep my money for me. As if they have no pockets or houses. They feel their money is safe. 
Do you know why people take money in their bank to complete strangers? Because banks learned the lessons of integrity and faithfulness. Are you learning? You find somebody in a foreign country after struggling, attaining papers, citizenships, and after acquiring citizenship and a certain job somewhere on a certain custom, he will also, she will also become a headache to those people trying to become citizens. I thought you went through that to learn. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you learning? Are you a good student of favor? Today's type of favor is a favor that gives you experience and exposure. Will you be a good leader? Will you become the best business person? Full of modesty, decency, integrity, faithfulness, humility, meekness, and love? Will you become somebody's favor and acceptance when God establishes you there? Will you become light to the darkness you will find there? Will you become the pioneer of how good CEOs should live? Praise the name of Jesus. Are you born again? Favor wants to give you exposure of how heaven looks like. Born agains here on earth are in exposure of heaven. We are experiencing heaven. We are going to be a family there. Holy, righteous, pure, and perfect. That's why... We are practicing holiness, righteousness, purity, perfection, and love. Because that's what it is in heaven. That is how it is in heaven. Are you a good student, my viewer, in this school of favor? We are favored, born again, to be children of God. We are practicing eternity here. Heaven and the blessings of God there. When God is blesses you too much, He's giving exposure of how heaven will be. That's why I don't believe in poverty. Because poverty is an exposure and experience of hell. Be blessed, my dear. If you're not born again, don't you want the experience of heaven on earth? Say this with me and be saved. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I love you and I give you praise. Save me today. I am born again. Establish and register me, my names, into the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on, for my sake. Amen. Oh, people who are just watching now, sorry. I'm winding up, but you can find it again on Facebook, on YouTube, everywhere. My partners, what you're doing is an exposure. God is going to take you far and beyond. Thanks for the support. Financial support, support in our device, in prayers. Thank you. And in resources. May God bless you. Dear viewer, that's another type of favor. May favor give you exposure of what you're going to become. I release this kind of favor on you. But please, I am begging you, be a good student of favor. Don't become opposite of what favor is teaching you today when you are eventually in your calling, in your blessing. Please, 
learn from the lessons favor is giving you. Learn from the exposure and from the experience. Joseph did. He learned. He became the best prime minister Egypt has ever had. And he still remains the best. Because when a day of favor came and Potiphar promoted him, he was given exposure and experience and he learned well. I pray that you learn well. I love you and Jesus loves you too. Till tomorrow. Amen.